hello. By the end of this video you should be able to make a 3D space shooter just like this one using the Godot game engine. Let's go. Let's open Godot and make a new project. Name it whatever you like. The first thing we will do when inside the project is to import our player and enemy models from Blender. You don't have to do this, you can make your own models if you like, but I think my models are better than yours so just use mine. Make a new folder, in Godot, where you will be putting the Blender imports. Drag the player and enemy GLTF files into that folder. Open the player file in Godot. Choose the open anyway option. And here we see the beautiful player spacecraft that I designed. Totally not a ripoff from Star Fox. However, this is a GLTF file, and is not native to Godot. So right click on the tab above, and save it as a TSCN file. Do the same for the enemy. We are only going to use the TSCN file in Godot and we can just leave the Blender imports folder alone. We are not going to use it anymore. Ok now it's time to start coding. Go back to the player.tscn file. The player is intended to move, so change the node type into a kinematic body. Attach a script to the player object. Delete all these useless stuff. Declare the constants and variables. We need a maximum speed of about 30 and acceleration of about 0.75. You can adjust these as you wish. We also declare our input vector and velocity which are both vector 3. Now in the physics process function we start coding our input vectors. Input vector dot x equals input dot get action strength ui right minus input dot get action strength ui left. This is just a shortcut for getting both left and right inputs, but you can also just make a bunch of if statements if you like. Do the same for input vector dot y, but with up and down. Next we normalize the input vector like this. And then we set up the horizontal velocity. Velo.x equals move toward the current Velo.x, moving into the input vector.x multiplied by our maximum speed, and rate of our acceleration. Do the same for y. We then rotate our ship, based on our current velocity. Rotation degrees dot z equals velocity dot x times negative 2. Rotation degrees dot x equals velocity dot y divided by 2. Rotation degrees dot y equals negative velocity dot x divided by 2. And finally to make our ship move. Move and slide by velocity. To test it, all we have to do, is to make our main scene, and add our player object to it. We also add a camera, so we can see what's happening. Put the player object in front of the camera about this far. You can adjust it as you like. Save your main scene. Then press F5 to test, and select our main scene. And there you go. Isn't it beautiful? Let's adjust the screen a little bit. Go to project settings, and go to window. Set the width to 1, 9, 2, 0 and height to 1, 2, 8, 0. This will make the screen a bit more square like Star Fox. Set the test height to 1. 2, 8, 0 and test width to 8, 5, 3, so that the game window is not too big when we test it. Now it's looking a bit better, but the player can still move outside of the screen. Let's fix that now. Go back to the player script. Let's clamp the X and Y position, so that the player can't go outside the screen. Transform.origin.x equals clamp transform.origin.x negative 15 and 15. Do the same for y, but with lesser value. And now the player should not be able to move outside the screen. Now it's time to set up our enemy. Go to your enemy.tscn file. Change the node type to kinematic body. 
the enemy needs collision so that our bullets can detect when it is shot. Add a collision shape to it. Then in shape, make a new box shape. I made the collision box a bit bigger than the enemy, so that they are easier to hit. You can do that too if you like. Add a script to the enemy. Delete all these useless stuff. The script for our enemy is very simple. We only want them to move towards the camera. Let's set their speed to a random value ranging from 20 to 50. Then in physics process we just do a move and slide. We set the speed to the Z value which is the third value. We also don't want enemies who don't get killed to continue existing. So we destroy them with Q3 when they are 10 meters behind the camera. That's pretty much it for our enemy. You can test this by placing a couple enemies in the main scene. Beautiful. But the problem is that they can only be seen when they are close enough. So go back to your camera object and set the far value to a higher number. I set this to 1000 now, but I later set it to 300 because 1000 was too far. Now it's time to add the enemy spawner. Make a new scene, and let's name it enemy spawner. Add a timer node to it. Add a script to it. Delete the useless stuff. Make a function for spawning. Oh and we need to instance the enemy. So we need to reference the main node and the enemy.tscn file just like this. Now instance the enemy in the spawn function and store it in an enemy variable. Add the enemy variable as a child of the main node. And finally set the position of the enemy to the position of the enemy spawner. But modified with a random number on both the x and y axis, so that they don't always spawn in the same position. Ok now go back to our timer node and set the wait time to 2. This means that we want an enemy to spawn every 2 seconds. Also set auto start to on. Go to signals, and connect the timeout signal to our enemy spawner script. Finally just call the spawn function on timeout. Add the enemy spawner to your main scene and place it far ahead of the player, where you want them to spawn. I put negative 500 here but later changed it to negative 300, because negative 500 was too far. And now we should see enemies spawning. Wait. It's not working. It's because I made a mistake. I loaded enemy.gd instead of enemy.tscn. Be careful of this. And now it's working. Beautiful. Time to make the bullets. Make a new scene, and make it a kinematic body. Name it bullet. Add a mesh instance to it. Make it a capsule mesh. Adjust the scale to how big you want your bullets to be. Go to material, and add a new spatial material. Enable emission and change the color to whatever color you want your bullet to be. Add an area node. Add a collision shape to the area node. Make it a capsule shape. This will be used to detect the collisions with the enemies. Adjust the collision shape to the size you want. I recommend being generous with this. Add a script to our bullet. Delete the useless stuff. All we need for this one is a velocity and a move and slide. Just like this. Now it's time to instance the bullets. Go back to the player object. Add some spatial nodes on wherever you want the bullets to spawn from. You can consider these your guns. I'm making two guns. You can make as many as you want. Adjust the gun positions as necessary. Now in the player script, make an array referencing all the guns in it. We also need to reference the main scene and load bullet.tscn, so we can instance it. Now let's instance the bullets. Let's make it, so that the bullets will spawn, when we press UI accept. 
that is space bar, or enter key by default. Iterate through the guns with a for loop. We can now instance the bullets inside the for loop just like this. We will also set the bullet velocity by its Z basis, which will make it move in the direction it is facing. Multiply it by the speed you want it to go. I put negative 600 in mine. Note that Godot uses negative Z as the forward direction. That is why I tend to use negative numbers for Z axis. And now we should be able to test out our bullets. Beautiful. However we don't really want to keep pressing space bar to shoot each bullet. Let's make it, so that it will fire automatically, if we hold the space bar. Go back to the player script, add a cooldown variable, and a maximum cooldown constant. In the shooting code we are going to check, if the cooldown is zero, before firing a bullet. I later change this to less than or equal to zero just to be safe. Once it is fired we will set the variable to the maximum cooldown multiplied by delta. Change the input to is action pressed. Finally subtract delta each step, if the cooldown is greater than zero. And there we go. We now have an automatic machine gun. However they still don't collide with the enemy. Let's fix that now. Go to the enemy object and go to its node tab. Add it into a group called enemies. Go to the bullet object. In the area node add a signal, when a body enters the area. Connect it to the bullet script. In the script we check if the body that entered, is in group called enemies. If so, we destroy both the body and the bullet with Q3. And there we go. That's basically all there is to making a basic 3D space shooter. You can add visual effects, sounds, and polish as you like. But if you want to see how I did it, stick around. The first thing I did, was to add crosshairs. I did this with the 3D sprite node. Parent them to the player object, and position them far ahead just like this. I then added a world environment node to the main scene and made a sky panorama with the space sprite. I added a light source near the player object, so we can see its bud clearly. In the world environment node, enable glow and add value to bloom, so that all light sources will emit some glow just like this. I also made a particle system with star-like objects moving towards the camera. This will sell the illusion, that the player is actually moving through space. I then made a simple particle system emitting from the exhaust of the players and the enemies. Finally I added some sounds to the bullet object, when it is spawned, and when it kills enemies. Congratulations. We just made a basic 3D space shooter. Now you can do whatever you want with it. Remember I'm also a beginner in Godot. And I'm pretty sure I did some things here that are not really optimal. Be sure to do your research. But I hope you at least learned something from this video. Smash that subscribe button or I will smash your mom.